Hello YouTube, Goddard Radio Moscow here again with another beer review for you as is usual. For this one we are going to continue yet again with the Scottish series of beer reviews that I've been doing for you. So for this one we're going to go to the Hebridean Islands, the Western Isles, and have a taste of a beer from the only alcohol producing company on those islands. So we're going to go to the Hebridean Brewing Company and have a taste of their Klansman beer which is a 3.9% golden ale. This is my first encounter with this beer, never tried anything from this brewery at all so it should be quite an interesting one and I picked this up in the Aldi Summer Beer Festival range and apparently that's going to be a regular thing so hopefully I can do this kind of Scottish beer month for you again and this is review number 26 in that series so I've got another eight or so to go so tune in for that series but anyway as is usual with my beer reviews then I'll take you through a very brief history of the brewery it is quite short but if you don't want to stick with me for that just fast forward a few minutes and you'll get straight to the tasting the brewery websites in the video description for you below along with a link to my other reviews that I will add from these guys in the near future hopefully. So anyway, as I mentioned to you, this brewery is based in Stornoway on the Isle of Lewis. This is the biggest island in the Western Isles and it's the capital of the Western Isles if you like as well. I believe the two main islands there are Lewis and Harris. One of my, my grandmother had a, a very good friend who I think was from Harris actually or lived out in Harris. Meant to be a very, very beautiful part of the country but it's somewhere that I'm uh, really meant to explore at some point. I really need to do that. But incidentally, they're also a Gaelic speaking uh, region as well. They speak very, very good Gaelic up there and in my opinion, it's something we really kind of need to restore to the whole of Scotland, make us better at European languages as well. But that's another, that's his, that's a different history. We're not talking about that just now. So the brewery is owned by Andrew Murdo Ribbon, who had always had a dream of since childhood of settling on the Hebridean Isles. And when he was settling there, the idea of a locally produced ale really appeared to him, appealed to him, sorry, and this prompted him to found the Hebridean Brewing Company. Now, after leaving the pharmaceutical company he'd been working for, he worked at the Free Miner Brewery in the Forest of Dean down in England, and he also he also worked for the flagship brewery in Kent as well and he did this to gain some experience in the brewing trade but the brewery began operations in January of 2002 in Stornoway and it's actually the only alcohol producer on the Outer Hebridean Islands as well so they have a total they have a 10 barrel brewing plant that was bought from a brewery in the West Midlands in England and this was built by Shawwood Engineering in Burton upon Trent and Andrew apparently still maintains a good relationship with Don Burgess of uh, Free Miner Brewery who continues to lend his insight into the operations of the brewery. But today the Hebridean Brewing Company's beers can be found in various outlets throughout the Highlands and Islands and they're actually looking to expand further and make their beer more widely available Available as well. As I said to you, I picked up this one from the Aldi Summer Beer Festival range and apparently that's going to be quite a regular thing now. They're going to do a winter one and a summer one so maybe at some point in the near future when I come back from Australia or Canada, wherever my travels take me, I'll actually be able to do another Scottish Beer Month for you so fingers crossed for that. But let's move on to the tasting of this guy itself now just to list a few of the other beers you can get from these guys though obviously you get this guy here the clansman which is the golden ale you get the islander which is a dark ale celtic black which is a porter berserker which is an ipa and there are some other ones out there as well so go and check out the brewery website and you can get an idea of that maybe the aldi range will actually take the uh, the porter there, the Celtic Black, that would be a nice kind of winter beer for them, so we'll see what happens there. But let's get on to the tasting of this guy itself now. As I said to you at the start, it's a 3.9% golden ale. I'll just bring up the camera and let you have a little quick look at the artwork on this one. It's quite nicely presented actually, I do like how this one's going to come out. You might have a bit of trouble seeing the silver part because of the light reflecting off the, the camera, but you can see it's got a clansman there and he's got his little saltire uh, with the Hebridean Islands on the, uh, on the thing there. I'll just, I'll I don't know how well you can see that, but this is the Hebridean Islands brewery crest on there and it's basically a, a saltire the scottish flag and it has the little the western isles basically going over the middle of it it's quite a nice logo actually i wish i could show you a little bit more clearly but have a look at the brewery website as i say but a very nicely presented beer 3.9 percent golden ale it says uh, gold hebridean bitter brewed with special malts lightly bittered a session ale with light golden color and with plenty of hop and malt character a distinctly fine ale made from all natural ingredients no additives or preservatives and pure Hebridean water and as I've said in a couple of my, my reviews actually you can notice a little bit of difference in the taste between these when you move around the country just something maybe to point out to you as well I don't know how well you can see it but on the bottle or at the bottom of the the label there you can see some Scottish Gaelic in there as well which is pretty cool but let's get this guy out and get on with the tasting then 
plain bottle cap on this one by the way as you can see a nice kind of smoky opening on it as well when we open it up but let's get it out and we'll get on with the tasting here I have to admit it's quite cool we're doing this series of reviews for you I found some really good gold nails uh, and blonde nails and stuff so hopefully this one kind of meets up to that standard as well some really really good beers we have in Scotland these days so let me just bring up the camera and let you have a little look at the colour of this one as you can see it's a very kind of bright pale golden straw colour this one it's completely transparent if I put my fingers behind it you can see right through it there's a solid half finger of a white frothy head in there and there's actually a hell of a lot of carbonation visible in this one a lot of small bubbles and some bigger ones in there as well it looks really really nice actually very kind of I'm thinking it'll be a nice kind of crisp beer actually actually if it's got that level of carbonation in it but let's give it a little smell yeah a nice big kind of fresh bready aroma it does have a little bit of a kind of barley note to it as well white bready there's a little bit of kind of grainy notes in there as I said a little bit of barley too and it has a it almost has a little bit of a kind of toasted aroma to that bread but there's definitely there's a definite bit of grassiness in there and quite a lot of citric fruit but mainly as you would expect from a gold nail or sort of golden bitter beer you can smell just a little bit of the spice that's characteristic of a bitter beer but you can pick up all the elements that should be there the white bread slightly toasted malts some kind of cereal character to it as well and some nice kind of grassy and citric hops there so it has everything you should expect from a golden ale and especially the, the little kind of uh, what was the word I'm looking for? The cereal character of it, the kind of cereal spice that you can pick up in it is what you should expect with a bitter beer. They've always got that nice big kind of slightly spicy bready malt base. So let's give it a taste and see how we get on here. Cheers. Hmm. It's very, very light actually. It's it's very very grassy actually a very, it's actually got quite a lot of kind of grassy and citric character that's the main thing that's coming out there it's actually quite sharp on the front of the tongue it's very 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 citrusy actually yeah very very citrusy in my opinion it's got a little bit of kind of cloying character about it. It's maybe just a little tiny bit too sweet. But when the malt base starts to come out a little bit more, it's quite mild on the malt base actually. You're just getting a little bit of this kind of uh, white bready character. Slightly, um, maybe a slightly rye bread actually. It does have that cereal spice in there. You've got just a little bit of that kind of blanket in the tongue. And around the edges you're getting the nice grassy character and quite a bit of citrus. It comes in very, very sharp but then it very quickly gives way to a more kind of mellow feel actually. Yeah. It comes in very, very sharp with kind of grassy, citrusy flavours then just mellows out to be a kind of very very mild kind of pale malted um, kind of malt base on this one very it's almost like pale pilsner malt actually that's in this one a little bit bready and just a little bit of biscuit malt in there as well but overall that the main component of the taste in this one really is the kind of sharp grassy and citric character that's in there yeah it does have a really kind of sharp lemony citric flavour to it. It's quite unusual in that way. I've never had one that does have that quite such a kind of sharp juicy character that comes in straight away but the, the malt base on it just kind of fades away to being very very mild. It's a very mild flavoured beer this one actually. But yeah, very kind of light mouthfeel this one. And it's it's quite unusual actually. It, it's unusual for a a blonde beer to or a bitter beer. They describe it as a blonde bitter. It's very unusual for it to have such a light malt base. Usually expect a nice big bready and kind of a uh, spicy character to it. And you're only picking up a little mild bit of that actually. It's mainly a kind of pilsner malt base that's coming out in this one. It's very very light in that sense. And for a bitter beer, I would expect quite a bit more in the malt base if I'm honest. But 
It would fit more actually being a lager in honesty with you. It's got a nice sharp grassy hoppy character. It's not very aromatic at all. It's mainly a fruity character that's coming out of this one. Just a little bit of kind of grassy citric character that comes in. That sticks around the front of the tongue. You get a nice little juicy bit round there and uh, you've got a nice little bit of kind of grass freshness going around the edge of the tongue too and you've got this kind of uh, bready sort of pale pilsner malt kind of taste just blanketing over the tongue there. In terms of the mouth feel, it's quite light bodied actually, it's got quite a soft carbonation and a kind of, it's got a very wet mouth feel this one actually and that kind of complements the kind of sharp juicy grassy character that you're getting at the start of this beer and that, that comes out quite a lot in the finish as well. Um, it's a very wet mouth feel one and it's this is one of the lightest beers I've ever tasted actually but I mean in terms of the style it's for them describing it as a golden bitter it just to me it just doesn't fit that bill actually it's more like a lager beer yeah it's definitely more like a lager beer it just it needs a bit more malt actually it really needs a, a bit more of a malt beer if it wants to fit into that bitter character it's it's quite an interesting one I would say but very very sharp maybe just a little bit too sharp on the kind of fruity hop character for my liking I mean other people might try this beer and like it quite a lot I'd really like to try some of their other ones and see how, how they come out but I think this one is quite unusual because it is described as a golden bitter but to me it comes out as more of a lager beer which is is a uh, I'm, I would. I was more expecting a gold nail, as I say. That's what it's, it says on the bottle. But um, it's a fairly interesting one. You know, if you get the chance, give it a try. See what you think of the one. I'd be interested to try more of their darker beers and also their IPA as well, just to see what that's like. But as I say, this one's kind of confused me a little bit. It says it's a golden bitter, but to me, it's more like a lager beer. But if you like a kind of very sharp, fruity character in your beers, then this is one that I would advise you go. You go for. The thing that I would point out with it as well. It actually comes out the bottle in the way you would expect a cask ale to. It's kind of, um, it comes out, as I say, it comes out very, very sharply and, uh, and it's, it's very light as well. That's the other thing you would expect from a cask ale, but normally with a cask ale you'd get a good bit of malt coming from it. I would have to admit, I, I do wonder whether it's been le this one's been left in the light for a little bit too long, maybe in the shop or something. I've had it kept in the dark in a box and in quite a cold condition as well, which is, is uh, quite unusual. I'm not sure if it's maybe oxidised slightly and get, that's what gives it the sharpness, but um, I mean if you do like a very very, from based on this one, if you do like a very very sharp fruitiness in your kind of lager beers then give this one a try. But I will definitely try some of the other ones from the Hebridean Brewing Company. I think I've heard that their dark beer and the porter one is meant to be very very nice so I'll see if I can get a hold of one of those next for you. But I hope you've enjoyed this review nonetheless. As I say if you want a sharp Pilsner beer then this is maybe one to try for you. But um, I hope you've enjoyed the review and you're continuing to enjoy this series of Scottish beer reviews. It's cool to be able to go around to the country and kind of try all the different beers from all over the place. You get some quite interesting ones thrown up. Um, but I hope you, as I say, I hope you're enjoying the Scottish series of beer reviews. Please comment in the section below and let me know your own thoughts on this beer. Always interesting to hear that. And please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. And I'll catch you soon with the next in this series. Cheers. <laughs>